started recording. I just started recording. No. Did I do it? Oh. Did I do it? Let's go. All right. All right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, the ongoing adventures of James and the Giant Peach with all the crazy characters. We are recording, so here we go. Chapter two. Hey, that's better, isn't it? Sorry about that. James and the Giant Peach, chapter 21. Why, it's absolutely brilliant, cried the old green grasshopper when James had explained his plan. The boy is a genius. Now I can keep my boots on after all. I shall be pecked to death. Oh, of course you won't. Will, I will, and I won't even be able to see them coming because I have no eyes. James went over and put an arm gently around the earthworm's shoulders. I won't let them touch you. I promise I won't, but we've got to hurry. Look down there. There were more sharks than ever now around the peach. The water was boiling with them. There must have been 90 or 100 at least. And to the travelers up on top, it certainly seemed as though the peach were sinking lower and lower into the water. Action stations, James shouted. Jump to it. There's not a moment to lose. He was the captain now, and everyone knew it. They would do whatever he told them. All hands below deck except earthworm. Yes, yes, they said eagerly as they scuttled into the tunnel entrance. Come on, let's hurry. And you, Centipede, hop downstairs and get that silkworm to work at once. Tell her to spin as she's never spun before. Our lives depend upon it. And the same applies to you, Miss Spider. Hurry on down, start spinning. Chapter 22. In a few minutes, everything was ready. It was very quiet now on top of the peach. There was nobody in sight, nobody except the earthworm. One half of the earthworm looked like a great, thick, juicy pink sausage, lay innocently in the sun for all the seagulls to see. The other half of him was dangling down the tunnel. James was crouching close beside the earthworm in the tunnel entrance, just below the surface, waiting for the first seagull. He had a loop of silk string in his hands. The old green grasshopper and the ladybug were further down the tunnel, holding on to the earthworm's tail, ready to pull him quickly in out of danger as soon as James gave the word. And far below, in the great hollow stone of the peach, the glowworm was lighting up the room so that the two spinners, the silkworm and Miss Spider, could see what they were doing. The centipede was down there too, exhorting them both frantically to greater efforts. And every now and again, James could hear his voice coming up faintly from the depths, shouting, spin, silkworm, spin, you great, fat, lazy brute. Faster, faster, or we'll throw you to the sharks. Here comes the first seagull. Keep still now, earthworm. Keep still. The rest of you get ready to pull. Please don't let it spike me. I won't. I won't. Shh. Out of the corner of one eye, James watched the seagull as it came swooping down towards the earthworm. And then suddenly it was so close that he could see its small black eyes and its curved beak. And the beak was open, ready to grab a nice piece of flesh out of the earthworm's back. Pull, shouted James. The old green grasshopper and the ladybug gave the earthworm's tail an enormous tug. And like magic, the earthworm disappeared into the tunnel. At the same time, up went James' hand and the seagull flew right into the loop of silk that he was holding out. The loop, which had been cleverly made, tightened just the right amount, but not too much, around its neck, and the seagull was captured. Hooray! shouted the old green grasshopper, peering out of the tunnel. Well done, James! Up flew the seagull, with James paying out the silk string as it went. He gave it about 50 yards and then tied the string to the stem of the peach. Next one, he shouted, jumping back into the tunnel. Up you get again, earthworm. Bring some more silk, centipede. That's quite a kite there. A seagull kite. Oh, I don't like this at all. It only just missed me. I even felt the wind on my back as it went squishing past. Shh, keep still. Here comes another one. So they did it again, and again, and again. And the seagulls kept coming. You know, if you've ever been to the beach and you have food at the beach, you know they never stop coming, do they? Ever. 
They kept coming and James caught them one after the other and tethered them to the peach stem. 100 seagulls, he shouted, wiping the sweat from his face. Keep going, keep going, James. 200 seagulls, 300 seagulls, 400 seagulls. The sharks, as though sensing that they were in danger of losing their prey, were hurling themselves at the peach more furiously than ever. And the peach was sinking lower and lower still in the water. 500 seagulls, James shouted. Silkworm says she's running out of silk. She says she can't keep it up much longer, nor can Miss Spider. Tell them they've got to. They can't stop now. We're lifting, someone shouted. No, we're not. I felt it. Put on another seagull quick. Quiet, everybody, quiet. Here's one coming now. This was the 501st seagull. And the moment that James caught it and tethered it to the stem with all the others, the whole enormous peach suddenly started rising up slowly out of the water. Look out. Here we go. Hold on, boys. But then it stopped. And there it hung. It hovered and swayed, but it went no higher. The bottom of it just was touching the water. It was like a delicately balanced scale that needed only the tiniest push to tip it one way or the other. One mole will do it, shouted the old green grasshopper, looking out of the tunnel. We're almost there. And now came the big moment. Quickly, the 502nd seagull was caught and harnessed to the peach stem. And then suddenly, but slowly, majestically, like some fabulous golden balloon. With all the seagulls straining at the strings above, the giant peach rose up, dripping out of the water, and began climbing towards the heavens. Chapter 23. In a flash, everybody was on top. Oh, isn't it beautiful? What a marvelous feeling. Goodbye, sharks. Oh boy, is this the way to travel? Miss Spider, who was literally squealing with excitement, grabbed the centipede by the waist, and the two of them started dancing around and around the peach stem together. The earthworm stood up on its tail and did a sort of wriggle of joy all by himself. The old green grasshopper kept hopping higher and higher in the air. The ladybug rushed over and shook James warmly by the hand. The glowworm, who at the best of times was a very shy and silent creature, sat glowing with pleasure near the tunnel entrance. Even the silkworm, looking white and thin and completely exhausted, came creeping out of the tunnel to watch this miraculous ascent. Up and up they went, and soon they were as high as the top of a church steeple above the ocean. I'm a bit worried about the peach, James said to the others as soon as all the dancing and the shouting had stopped. I wonder how much damage these sharks have done to it underneath. It's quite impossible to tell from up here. Why don't you? I, I know. I why don't I go over the side and make an inspection? It'll be no trouble at all, I assure you. And without waiting for an answer, she quickly produced a length of silk thread and attached the end of it to the peach stem. I'll be back in a jiffy, she said. And then she walked calmly over to the edge of the peach and jumped off, paying out the thread behind her as she fell. That's quite a sight. All the disappointed sharks down here, boo hoo. The others crowded anxiously around the place where she had gone over. Wouldn't it be dreadful if the thread broke, the ladybug said. There was a rather long silence. Are you all right, Miss Spider? shouted the old green grasshopper. Yes, thank you. I'm coming up now. And up she came, climbing foot over foot above up the silk thread, and at the same time tucking the thread back cleverly into her body as she climbed past it. Is it awful? Is it all eaten away? Are there great holes in it everywhere? Miss Spider clambered back onto the deck with a pleased but also rather puzzled look on her face. You won't believe this, but actually there's hardly any damage down there at all. The peach is almost untouched. There are just a few tiny pieces of it here and there, but nothing more. You must be mistaken, James told her. Of course she's mistaken. I promise you I'm not. But there are hundreds of sharks around us. They churn the water into froth. We saw their great mouths opening and shutting. I don't care what you saw. They certainly didn't do much damage to the peach. Then why did we start sinking? Oh, perhaps we didn't start sinking. Perhaps we were all so frightened that we simply imagined it. This, in point of fact, was closer to the truth than any of them knew. A shark, you see, has an extremely long, sharp nose, and its mouth is set very awkwardly but underneath its face and a long way back. This makes it more or less impossible for it to get its teeth into a vast, smooth, curving surface, such as the side of a peach, even if the creature turns out onto its back, it still can't do it because the nose always gets in the way. If you've ever seen a small dog trying to get its teeth around an enormous ball, then you will be able to imagine roughly how it was with the sharks and the peach. It must have been some kind of magic. The holes must have healed up themselves. Oh, look, 
there's a ship below us, shouted James. Everybody rushed to the side and peered over. None of them had ever seen a ship before. It looks like a big, ooh, ooh. Is it a big one? It's got three funnels. You can even see the people on the deck. Let's wave to them. Do you think they can see us? Neither James nor any of the others knew it, but the ship that was now passing beneath them was actually the Queen Mary, sailing out of the English Channel on her way to America. And on the bridge of the Queen Mary, the astonished captain was standing with a group of his officers, all of them gaping at the great round ball hovering overhead. I don't like it, nor do I. Do you think it's following us? I tell you, I don't like it. It could be dangerous. That's it. It's a secret weapon. Holy cat, send a message to the queen at once. The country must be warned and give me my telescope. The first officer handed the telescope to the captain. The captain put it to its eye. To his eye. There are birds everywhere. The whole sky is teeming with birds. What in the world are they doing? And wait, wait a second. There are people on it. I can see them moving. There's a... a do I have this darn thing focused right? It looks like a little boy in short trousers. Yes, I can distinctly see a little boy in short trousers standing up there. And there's a, there's a, 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 a sort of giant ladybug. Oh, now just a minute, Captain, the first officer said. In a colossal green grasshopper. Captain, Captain, please. And a mammoth spider. Oh dear, he's been at the whiskey again, whispered the second officer. And an enormous, simply enormous centipede. Call the ship's doctor. Our captain is not well. A moment later, the great round ball disappeared into the cloud, and the people on the ship never saw it again. Chapter 24 tomorrow. That's exciting stuff. A lot of fun. Let's look at our daily assignments. Then I have uh, some people that are supposed to share today. Namely, let's see, Anderson, Arjun, Fabian are to be sharing. Let's take a look at our daily assignment page. Of course, it's not on the top where it should be. So let's swing on down here and see where it went. Do, do, do. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's make sure I didn't close it out. It's quite possible, you know. Oh, there it is, the daily assignment. There it is, the picture confused me. All right, so I'm gonna call on some of you to read part of the daily assignment today because I did say I will be calling on people to read. We just completed James and the Giant Peach by Rule Dahl, uh, chapters 21, 22, 23. So James saves the day again with his thinking and problem solving skills. What do, you, what do these three chapters say about the importance of teamwork? How do James and the other creature skills work together? And what creature in or on the giant peach do you relate to? Do you like the centipede? He's a rascal. Uh, the spider, the glowworm, the ladybug, uh, old green grasshopper. Which one do you relate to the most? Of course, some of you might relate to the sharks the most. I don't know. Spelling the vocabulary. I'm going to mute, unmute some of you now. Would, let's see, alliteration. Let's hear Swati read the definition of alliteration. Go. Let me enlarge it a little bit. Hold on a second. Okay. There you go. Oh, oh, but, but, oh, oh, oh. There. Allar alliteration. 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 The repetition of a, a identical consonant sounds. Most often, in the sounds beginning words in close proxim proximity. Pro Say pro proximity. Proximity. There you go. Let's assonance. Uh, Upton. Upton, where'd you go? How come I can't unmute you? Well, let's have uh, Wyatt. Assonance. Assonance. The repetition of identical vowel sounds in different words in close proximity. Example, <clears throat> deep green sea. Thank you very much, Wyatt. Metaphor, let's hear from Anders Anderson. A, com a, a comparison between two unlike things that describes one thing as if, 
as if it were something else. Does not use like or as as a comparison. See simile. Yes, yeah, see simile because similes do. Viga, refrain. Refrain. Repeated words or series of words in response of counterpoint to the main verse as a ballad, a, in a ballad. Very nice, thank you very much. And Lena, simile. Mm. Wait, let me find it. It's right there. A direct comparison between two dissimilar things uses like or as to state the terms of comparison. Thank you very much. Going forward, um, we're gonna have more reading on the screen. Editing, we have our Native American astronaut, the last day for that one. Grammar practice, now I hope you're doing this because you have a slideshow and you just click on it, you run through the slides, then you do the little quiz and you let me know how many you got out of 12. You do these every day and your knowledge and your memory and your uh, grammar ability will improve. Independent reading, 20 minutes a day. Have you ever wanted to give one of your favorite book characters advice? What was it or what could it be? What advice do you think they would give you? It's always fun to imagine if you could talk to the characters in your books. You've watched the movie, I'm sure, where you, know, you wanna yell at the screen, don't go in that door. In fact, often people do yell things at the theater like that. So that's your independent reading for today. And please finish up Long Ago and Far Away in Ancient Rome in Mac and V I A app. We'll have a little mini book report for that tomorrow. I do want you to finish this uh, video on tic-tac-toe poetry. And now getting to my favorite part of the daily assignment today. I color coded it. Take a look at this. You have alliteration in pink, assonance in cyan, metaphor in gray, simile in green, and refrain in yellow. So alliteration is that consonant sound. You have ta, 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 ta. Then you have a refrain, Tom's tall tales. A simile, his are like whales. A metaphor, he is a tortoise assonance with the o o o sounds and then the refrain tom's tall tales so let's read it okay uh whoever is up with this whoever's doing that please stop now thank you tom's terrific at telling tall tales tom's tall tales when it comes to massive his are like whales tom's tall tales only slowly and wholly are his poems told, Tom's tall tales. He is a tortoise, but is very bold, Tom's tall tales. So in this little stanza, actually is rhyming too, and it's a stanza, so really it has seven things in one little poem. All of these match up to one of our poetic elements. If you need help with your rhymes, Rhyme Zone is great. And let me just uh, take my glasses off here. All right, over the last, I guess it's man, six weeks now, six weeks, I really put in effort to make these online lessons on the daily Bagby assignment, engaging, fun, and really good learning experiences. So please take advantage of them. No, not everything is graded, not everything is as important as the others, but there are endless varieties of things that you can do on these pages, and I really appreciate it if you're putting in your best effort. The next one, gifted thinking skills, is find the missing thing in the picture. On this picture, you have to find the crayon. On this one, you have to find the gloves. Now I wanna show you the quality of this print. Look at that. Not pixelated yet, still not pixelated, still not pixelated. So that's a mighty fine, high quality picture. So if you've ever played those before, there's something hidden in there. Find the crayon, find the gloves. The answers to yesterday are right there. The more you take from me, the bigger I get. That would be a hole in the ground, a hole. The more you take, the bigger it gets. Timmy's mother, Timmy. And what is taken before you can see it? A picture. Raise your hand if you got any of those right. I got 
Did you? Good. Finish up your long ago and far away in ancient Rome. And again, if you're having trouble with that, I'm not really sure why. Because if you if you log into Clever and you click on Mac and VIA, there's a search box. And if you put long ago and far away ancient Rome in the search box and click enter, the book should come right up. So make sure that you're reading that book. It's a great picture book and it really makes you feel like you're in ancient Rome. Yesterday we had arches in ancient Rome, which is a great little video. Today it's aqueducts, which also have arches. Aqueducts covered or uh, were used in ancient Rome and wherever they went, they built aqueducts that would transfer water from water sources over miles and miles of land and get it to the cities and towns where people lived. It's a really cool little video. This one's awesome. The 17 most unreal rock formations on earth for geography. Many of these I had never seen in my life. I didn't even know they existed. They are really, really cool. Uh, today's quiz is on poetry elements. And then this is about how the state of Florida is opening those beaches and other things too. How do you feel about this? You know, my wife and I, we're just gonna take it easy and still remain in quarantine till everything is super safe. Much of the sand on Florida, it comes all the way from the Appalachian Mountains, the Smoky Mountains. The Appalachian Mountains all the way along, uh, close to the East Coast. And this is a close up view of sand, microscopic. So those aren't shells, that's actually what different kinds of sand looks like. Now, I'm gonna remind you again that your private channel is a place where we can have our own little Zoom meeting if you need something explained more fully. So please request that if anything is confusing to you and make sure you get your work in. So I'm gonna stop the share now. Unmute. Why do you need to be a ba ba Barney was a dinosaur? Unmute all and then do this. And here we go. You'll be able to unmute yourself. So let's hear from Anderson. What do you have to share today? Get it out. Anderson, go ahead. I'm, I'm looking. I don't okay. want to get it out. Mr. Bagby. Yes. I have a question. Okay, Anderson's trying to pull up what he wants to share. What's your question real quick? Um, so the poem words, is there gonna be a test for that? Just a vocabulary one. Oh, okay. Just matching again, okay? The more you use them, the more you'll get to know them. And plus they're all reviewed in that video too with the uh, tic-tac-toe game yep. show. They talk about every one of them. Is a dinosaur. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Oh, there it goes. Yay. This is my farm project. All right, go ahead. Welcome to Le Moon's Place. All our lemons are fresh here. Everything is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We, we squeeze our lemons into lemonade, lemon ice, lemon pies, and lemon juice, and into, and into our lemon eyes. You gotta say the next part. Oh, you forgot the OMG. OMG, that stinks. Yes, they do. Let's give them the clicky clicks. Snappy snaps. Nice poem, Anderson. You said Arjun had to share today. He just called me on Discord and I told him to join the Zoom meeting. Yeah, I'm telling you, the Zoom meeting is not optional. Even if you don't have video capability, you can still see all of us and you can still see what's going on. So we are expecting to uh, let's go He's to the dinosaur. Um, Fabian. Fabian. Farney was a dinosaur. Fabian, do you have something to share today? No. Mr. Bagby. Okay, it's Fabian's turn. Fabian? Well, I want to share how I practice the geography games and I learned a lot about the flags of Europe. Cool. The what of Europe? 
the flags of Europe. All the flags of Europe. What do you think about those flags? Well, um, the first time I did the homework, I saw the game. So when I got there, I did it. And I got like a 40 out of 46. Very good. That's pretty good. Anything else? And I kept practicing, and now like I keep getting forty-four or forty-six. Nice. Try the other ones too. Um, just you know, you just do those a little bit every day, and it's amazing how much you learn.